So I'm partway through doing the uh, the build on my chain steering wheel, and I've decided I want it to be a little bit more blingy, a little bit shiny, and just just nicer looking than kind of half rusty. Um, now I'd love to have it chrome plated, but chrome plated anything costs an absolute fortune to to get that done. Um, it's not really something you can do at home because all the nasty chemicals and again the cost and complexity of it all. Um, so I was thinking back to to school and chemistry lessons. We did nickel plating, um, so I'm gonna have a go at actually coaching in a nice silver nickel. Now it's not something I've done say since I was at school so I had to look online for the process to do that uh, and there's a couple of processes, one involving uh, nickel sulfate and boric acid and measuring stuff uh, and loads of basically stuff you can't easily get off the shelf. Um, and then I found a, a fantastic website which I'll link to uh, in the description below um, which shows a quite simple way of doing it. So <laughs> it's probably too good to be true um, but all we're going to need is distilled vinegar uh, or white vinegar whatever it may be called uh, this one's from Sainsbury's but you can get it from uh, Asda or Walmart it's 29p per pint which is pretty cheap stuff really uh, the other thing you're going to need table salt um, just a little bit um, and that goes in there to help it speed the reaction up a bit and if you get yourself on eBay again I'll put a link in the description you need a couple of nickel anodes. If you do search for nickel anode, you'll find these things. I got the round ones because they're a nice, convenient size, but on a beaker and stuff. Um, and these cost about ten quid delivered to the door, so not mega money at all. And you're going to need a power source. So I'm just using a cheapo phone charger. Uh, this one's one amp. Uh, it's five volts. Nothing special, and it's just on a, an old USB lead, which I can show you. Basically, I've just taken the, the black and red terminal and linked them to some spades. Okay, so this is a two-part process. So the first thing we've got to do is create uh, our nickel electrolyte, or uh, I think it's called nickel acetate. Sounds really complicated. It's really not. There is a big old jam jar I prepared earlier. <laughs> so here again, it's just white vinegar or um, distilled vinegar. Uh, we're going to get our positive. On that, let's get our negative, another cathode. Put on there, so we've got nickel on both sides, and we're going to get our table salt. So the table salt just basically increases conductivity, uh, speeds up a little bit. We'll put a couple of teaspoons within. Not going too crazy. Plug him in. So I'm going to leave it running like that for uh, a couple of hours and if it's working correctly um, our vinegar is going to go a nice shade of green. I got a bit bored waiting for the, the one amp charger to turn things green so uh, I hooked up a 12 volt battery charger so that runs at about 14 volts and so it certainly made things nice and fizzy now. So hopefully it will speed the process up. Okay, I left that running for about uh, six hours. I'll be honest with you, I forgot to turn it off. <laughs> um, so it's got a nice shade of green. Now I'm hoping it's not too concentrated because that can cause problems with uh, uh, actually plating it. Say if it's too concentrated, you can get black spots. Apparently, it doesn't adhere properly. Um, have a have a we give it a try. We've got a test piece. So what I've done is I've removed the the negative side, um, the the nickel from there. Uh, so our cathode has now been swapped for our test piece, which is just a little copper coil. Um, I put that in the ultrasonic cleaner uh, and a bit of detergent to, to take any uh, greases off. And then I washed it down basically with a, a bit of plain old vinegar uh, just to get any impurities off it. And in it goes. Uh, I've also swapped the charger around, so now onto the uh, the 5 volts 1 amp charger rather than the 12 volt charger because um, apparently it works better at lower voltage. So uh, I'm going to turn that back on now, give it a little test and hopefully we'll get some uh, nickel coating going. Now I say it's an experiment to see whether we can actually coat nickel onto basically bare chain. 
Um, as I understand it, they can be a little bit tricky coated onto the bear chain because they, it doesn't always take to steel and stuff or different steels. Also, you have to question whether you actually want to nickel plate the steering wheel and the chain in the first place. Um, reading nip on nickel, it appears that it's toxic and carcinogenic in some forms. So suddenly when you're welding and breathing and grinding it, uh, it sounds like it's a carcinogen. Um, for a lot of people, uh, nickel can cause skin irritation, um, eczema and all sorts of reactions as well. So again, you've got to question whether you want to put pure nickel onto a steering wheel. It doesn't sound like a good idea really. Um, I was going to clear coat it, it should negate that effect, but however, it's going to wear through in time and ultimately you are going to have issues with uh, your skin contacting nickel. So for this experiment it's more to see whether it will actually take to the, um, to the steel directly um, and that's a really good process we can use for doing things like uh, nuts and bolts, uh, for, for doing, I don't know, uh, the big washers you put around your, your fuel tank, stuff like that. So uh, we've now got a tub of uh, nickel acetate we can use and an electro electrolysis uh, process to coat things that will make it look good for you know, on your car that you're not going to be contacting and touching all the time. However, for the steering wheel, I'm probably moving away from the, the nickel idea now. Okay, I've been running for half an hour. In that time, the bare metal part look has uh, gone rusty. Hmm, certainly coating. See the difference there at the top look. So I'll leave it in for a bit longer and see what happens. I've had the chain in for about eight hours now. Um, it's covered really well actually. It covered better on the steel than I expected it to. Um, even in the places where it was kind of touching it's covered relatively well. However the finish is kind of like a, um, almost a zinc primer colour. It's a silvery grey uh, kind of colour. It's got a bit of a sheen to it but not how I kind of wanted or was hoping it was going to turn out, which was not chrome, but I was hoping it's going to be a little bit more shiny, more like a 10 pence piece, I guess. My last little piece for today is a body to pan washer. Um, I stuck it in to see what had happened basically. It was galvanized steel to start, and it has coated, and some of it looks alright, but a lot of it just looks a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to show you this quickly. Um, I just tea cutted the uh, the body to pan washer and it's actually come up alright so most of the black is actually rubbed off and I suspect if I kept going more of it will come off um, so not perfect but I'm relatively impressed by that so clearly it does a better job on something that's nice smooth steel to start with than it does scabby old chain so there's no comparison really <laughs>